Hello my friends, today I'm going to demonstrate to you how we do a quick P calls examination. So remember the child should be in an appropriately exposed position so you should be wearing on the underwears and the rest of the body should be visible to you. After taking the permission and explaining the purpose of your examination, you always start by inspecting. So the child should be standing uh, on his both feet and you should start the inspection from the front. So what are you doing? You are actually inspecting the musculoskeletal system. So you look at his body, you're looking at the appearance and you're looking at the belt. So basically you're looking at the musculature and the joints. So you see whether the joints are swollen, whether they are deformed on one side or the other. And you also look at the muscle bulk, whether the muscle bulk seems to be normal, whether it is atrophied or whether it's hypertrophy. So you inspect from the front you inspect from the side and you inspect from the back. From the side, it's important because you are looking at the posture, whether the posture is straight and normal for that age group or whether he has got a sort of an hunched back uh, appearance or whether he's got too much, he's leaning back like this. Um, you, From the back, you also look at the, uh, the straightness of the spine as well and you see whether he has got any sort of curvature like scoliosis or something though the best uh, way to look for, for that is when you ask the child to bend down. Anyhow, so once you have done the inspection, then you ask the child to take a few steps. So you start by examining his gait. So you ask the child to take a few steps forward and you are looking whether the child walks with a normal gait or whether he has got an antalgic gait. An antalgic gait means because he has got pain in one of the joints or muscles, so he is taking short steps. Um, once you have examined the gait, then the next step would be uh, to ask the child to bend down, keeping his knee straight and try to touch the floor. He tries to do that and when he's doing that, you go on the back side and you try to look at the spine. So basically you are looking at the spine to see if there is any scoliosis curvature or whether there's any winging of the scapula. Once you have done that, then again you come to the front side of the child and now you start by examining his upper limbs. So you would quickly scan the joints and muscles of the upper limb. How do we do that? So you, rather than, uh, you know, looking for individual muscles or something, we try to check the action of the muscles in groups. So we ask the child to make this position. So he keeps his hand, brings his hands and, you know, uh, forearms in front of him like this so when he is able to does that what are you looking for what are you checking is basically you are checking the flexion of the shoulder joints you are looking at the extension of the elbow joints and you're looking at the extension of the hand and fingers as well so if he can do that you know that these movements are normal then you ask him to turn his hands like this and make fists so when he can do that basically you are looking at the pronation and you're looking at the flexion of the hand and uh, finger muscles okay so once he's done that then you ask him if he's able to make a pincer graph so if he's able to touch his uh, thumb and uh, first finger and then you ask him to do with all these things so you are actually looking at the manual dexterity of the small muscles and the small joints of the fingers that are usually affected in rheumatoid arthritis or other uh, inflammatory conditions in which the small joints of the hands are affected okay so once you have done that then you will gently squeeze the metacarpals and the phalanges of the uh, hands to see if there's any tenderness or pain in those joints once he has done that now you'll ask the child to raise his hands up and look upward so when he can do that basically he can abduct his shoulders and he can extend his C spine. So if you can do that, these movements are normal. After that, you will ask the child to bend his uh, neck and try to touch his chest with his chin. So if he can do that, the C spine flexion is normal. Then you ask him to turn his neck towards the left side. We should be able to see exactly 90 degrees to the left and then 90 degrees to the right. That means that the rotational movement of the C-spine is normal. And you ask him to turn his neck like this toward the left side and then towards the right side, trying to touch his ear to the shoulder left or the right corresponding. And that actually checks the lateral uh, flexion of the C-spine. 
Once you have done that, you ask the child to put his hands behind his head like this. So what, if he's able to do that, what are you looking for? You are basically checking the abduction of the shoulders and the same time external rotation. So abduction and external rotation at the shoulder joint. Remember, you are still examining the upper limbs. So if he is able to do that, so shoulder abduction and external rotation is normal. Then you ask the child to bring his hands at his back and try to scratch his back. If he can do that equally on both sides, that means that the internal rotation and adduction at the shoulder joints is normal. Internal rotation and adduction. This was external rotation and abduction. This is internal rotation and adduction. So if he is able to do that, you have checked the joints of the upper limb. I will stop here. In another video, I will tell you how do we examine the joints and musculature of the lower limb.